Welcome to Three Witches and a Druid Podcast, a Canadian podcast about paganism in today's modern society. and a druid where we sit around drinking lovely mulled cider talking about our lives as modern pagans and today we are going to talk about our experiences and our thoughts on pagan ethics. I'm Margot and I'm Maeve 
Gwen. And I'm Brian. So pagan ethics is a really big thing for Druidry, as it's pretty much the core of our existence. And pagan ethics is like, what do you mean by pagan ethics? It's like, what's the difference between everyday ethics and people's ethics and Christian ethics or pagan ethics? Like, what do you guys view is a difference between, say, pagan ethics and Thanks. everyday ethics. I think our basic, and at harm none do as you will, yeah. is just basic human laws of humanity. You know what I mean? Do what you like, don't hurt anyone, you know, lie, cheat, steal, covet, kill. But I think sometimes where our ethics, for me, really come sharply into focus is when we're doing magic. I mean, I don't lie, cheat, steal, covet, or kill too much. <laughs> <laughs> Not lately. Plus, COVID's on. I can't do anything yeah. any fun anymore. I don't, you know, really, except for, you know, <laughs> pretending to be a senior citizen to get in the movies. Right, right. Okay. Second, you know, there's that. But I think it's because we do work with magic a lot of the time that that's where the big difference I think, but just because you can do something, should you? You know what I mean? The ethics of what, the magic and things we may do. Right. It's kind of against our religion not to recycle and to live as lightly as possible on the earth and things like that. But I think the real well, hardcore ethic deal for me is in magic. It's funny you say that because not all pagans abide by that. And that to me is mind blowing. Oh, me too. That's pagan blasphemy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Pagan blasphemy. laughs> so we've already jumped to pagan blasphemy. So that's that, what that was you part of this pagan conversation. Blasphemy, right? Yeah. That's that's how I feel. Yeah. Not living by our care, care of care of the earth. Care of the earth. Right. I know. Well, when I first started at the flower shop. We had one giant garbage that was for mm. organics and plastic and paper and it garbage. Awful. It was and awful. I, mind blowing. I, it was my boy to me. And I, I remember saying in a group that if I'm ever in charge, that's the first thing I'm changing. And Rhonda said, I give you six months till you're in charge of that joint. Well, I think it was five. <laughs> yeah. And that was one of the first things I did. And again, we have this giant bin for organics decent size bin for paper and plastics and a container probably about the size of a one liter ice cream container for garbage that probably takes about three or four days to fill yeah yeah so recycling and looking after the earth and that i think is a really important thing but i also think as part of i know this is going to be a sweeping general statement sweep away but i think maybe part of the difference between pagan ethics for me and say other religions ethics or non-religions people's ethics is the consciousness in which we swear to live by them and the consciousness of our actions to do the best we can for everybody around us and for the earth right and that that's a big thing in Druidry. On like other spiritualities or religions, we're not I'm gonna say these wrong. Orthodoxy. We, we don't just believe or oh. orthopraxy. We do it. Yeah. We do what we say we we're going to do. And we live our lives to those standards we set for ourselves, be it environmentally friendly, minimalistic, whatever you may decide. Hey. We don't just sit there and preach it, we, we do it. Yeah. Talk the talk and walk the walk. Exactly, yeah. So our, our household, for example, is very, everything in our, our home is, is a strive to be as resourceful as possible is, and provide as little waste. Like, I, I can't stand it when garbage day comes along because we have like half a bag. But recycling, there's like six bags going into the door. And now that we're only doing recycling bags. Oh, it's every the worst. Two weeks, it's like you get two bags. Yeah, my garbage bin isn't big enough. I know that the bin for that is. Anyway, let's stop talking about that. But there's some places that don't even recycle. They don't do compost. They don't, I can't. Some municipalities. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I agree. Well, I have lived with now 37 mm-hmm. people from 14 different countries and only one that I can really think of had any recycling, and that was Korea. Everywhere else, every time I get new people, what do you mean you have five garbages? Yes, there's a garbage for this, a garbage for this, a garbage for this, a garbage for this. And half the time, I, I've given up lately. I just take their garbage and pick through it myself. 
Yeah. Except for the food. You said you can't keep food. But it's like, okay, I will take the bottles. I'll take the cans. I'll take your papers off. Yeah. I just do it because they're looking at me like I got 27 heads and I'm the most ridiculous woman in yeah. Like, we have garbage. We have recycling. We have refundables. And we have compost. Mm-hmm. It's not that hard. No, to them it is. It's unfathomable. Yeah. But they have to do that because I even have a separate bag for plastic. Yeah. There's plastics, there's papers, there's recyclables, there's compost and regular garbage. It's, mm-hmm. Anyway. And we're talking about this a lot because it has a lot of importance, but that is almost an unwritten ethic. Yeah. Like you, you mentioned Anna and Harnan, like the read and that sort of thing. And, the, and at least ADF has the nine the, virtues, the nine virtues, but other Drudery, you know, has the wisdom text and everything else. Yeah. When you go through, I think this is a modern take on older values. This is how we enact older values of, of being part of an animistic, pantheistic world sort of thing that, that we take care of our mass and I think personal responsibility is probably an ethic that is pagan wide not just specific to Wicca or mm-hmm. or that sort of thing but yeah it is kind of hard because because when we look at some other religions the rules are spelled out by a holy text by mm-hmm. by something that that lays it all out whereas we look at certain things like like the virtues or whatever we say how do we do that because the virtues don't say don't kill anybody. No, no. They they say hospitality. They say yeah. moderation. They say all of these various things. And you have to you have to have the discernment to say how do I enact that? And that's your orthopractic right sort of yeah. Thing. Well, there's different spiritual beliefs that uh, say don't murder and. Well, yeah. we can see how that went. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, not at yeah. all. Not in the slightest. God wills it. Anyone see Kingdom of Heaven? Yeah. Like slaughter all of them. God wills it. And it doesn't matter what religion you are, God wills it. You yeah, know, that's like, yeah, absolutely we're not insane. No. The great thing about pagans is there's too many gods and we can't. We can't. We can't. Know, not not one anybody. of them gets a willing. <laughs> yeah, and they're all saying it's on you. It's yeah. on you. Well, and I think that's. A big part of it is like what you said, personal responsibility. I'm responsible for my behavior and I'm responsible for how I act or react in different situations. Right. And it's also my responsibility to then accept those consequences should they arrive good or bad. And then how do I act or react to those consequences rather than the it's out of my hands, it's not my fault, it's... Or I followed the the letter of the law and not the, the spirit of the it. spirit yeah. of whatever the religious law or... Right. So, yeah, I think there's certain unwritten things like personal responsibility, like how do you... Like your relationship to to the natural world and and so how do you ethically make that work in your modern day? I... Um, recently bought a book called Sacred Actions by Amer- uh, American Druid and breaks it down by the will of the year so it's very interesting and the first the first uh, project she did for you all was go on to a website and calculate your effect on the earth so here I am in my home heated by electricity provided by solar I make it, I generate enough solar that I can sell it back to the grid I don't use solar. I have a hybrid vehicle. I still need over four Earths to support me. Four Earths. Four something. Four point something. And so, yes, I live in this wonderful country where we have so many things. And I'm trying my best and I'm like, crap. What do I do? I recycle. I do all of these things. And I'm like, what can I change? Right. What can I change? It's hard. Is that Sacred Actions by Dana O'Driscoll? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sacred Actions by Dana O'Driscoll. I think that's on my Amazon wish list. It's, uh, I'll own it to you. Okay. And then you can see if you want your own copy. And then I'll buy it from it. Yeah. And not buy it from Amazon. Yes. I buy it from the small local independent books. Very good. (laughs) Very good. Yeah. So she's got some interesting... But that was the first breakdown, and I'm so I'm looking around. I'm growing more food. I've set up for that. I'm eating more locally. Yeah, it's going to be a struggle. And I think to myself, if me and this conscious making making choices that are financially 
you know, cost me financially to choose to live a certain way or cost our time. Like, and it's not that much once you get in the, once you've trained yourself to be recycling, we all do it without thinking now and all that sort of thing. But what about the people that go through their life mindlessly? Like that are not, that haven't got this mind bent. Like what is the cost on the environment if that's where I'm sitting? I'm like, oh my goodness. And, and I also think because for many years it was just, you know, it was, a, you had a very small household, your children were gone and all that. It's easier. But if you've got two, three kids, yeah, how do you do this? And I mean, you know, I have, I put in a lot of extra work to try to keep environmentally friendly in my house because I just can't get it through some people's heads. They think it's crazy. Yeah. And, and for, you know, when you have four people living in your house, you got a family of five or six. Yes. Like, how on earth would you ever manage to keep down on your water and keep down on this? And, like, you know, electricity, especially if you've got, you know, four computers and this and that and pads and video games going. It's really shocking. We, we're we in a suburban situation, but it's a very small city, so we're very lucky about transit. So your kids could eventually get themselves to and from if you're a big household, but you're on the, can be in your car a lot to be dropping kids off at piano lessons or this or, or that. that. Or hockey or swimming or whatever swimming the case or, might be. Yeah. yeah. The things we want to have and give to our children, and even if they're experience based, as opposed to there's still this, there is still an environmental cost. But at least I'm hoping that awareness counts for something. I know good intentions take you to hell, but um, <laughs> good, thing we, the the good yeah. thing we don't believe in that. Good thing we don't believe. Well, I was actually. It's interesting that we're talking about this now because I think it was about two months ago. I was sitting and thinking about that when I was picking through someone's garbage because you can't get it through their head. You have to put that coke can down here because yeah. Anyway, and I thought you know I thought about when I was younger. You know, cars weren't as efficient and, you know, the, your stoves and your electricity and your light bulbs and all that, you know, in the fridge. And yes, they're much more energy efficient, but we have so many more things today to yeah. take up electricity. When I was growing up, there was one TV in the house. Yep. Now there's two TVs and four computers going at once and notepads and everyone's got their own phone they plug in. I really thought about it and I said, I don't think we're burning less electricity at Even all. Even things are more efficient because we have so many more things to that we plug in the wall. Yeah. But we, we sit here and poo-poo on ourselves all we want and it's not it's not necessarily about us as the individual. You can only do so much. Yes. And that's the good thing. The other thing when it comes to the ethics of this is understanding that there's large corporations out there that just do innately stupid fucking shit. Yeah. Like there, there's this, uh, there's an article floating around and I'll, I'll see if I can tag it in the show notes about this, this airline that was flying empty planes back and forth between airports over COVID to save their spots at these airports. But you're just flying these planes back and forth empty for no other reason than to save their spot. And what is, you know, like a transatlantic flight is like five years of running your car. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Like, flight. It's, is it's, it really? It's yeah, yeah. It's the you know same amount of environmental damage. So under part of the pagan ethics for me is finding out who that idiot is no longer supporting them. I, yeah. I think they're they're like an Indian airline or something, but I wouldn't be shocked if they're Canada or, or Oh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if no. all of them have to. But it's like I'm not I wouldn't support that. But that's bullshit. And that's shame on them, but also shame on the organization that they have to be organized in that requires that yes. of yeah. them. Mm-hmm. But that's a problem. That's a problem. There are things maybe we can't change. And I mean Yes, we have to worry about our individual ethics, but this is where sometimes you vote with where you spend your money, you vote with, you vo- and you vote with your vote. Yeah. So it's, you know, who values the things you value, but see them in local governments, that makes a lot of difference in your local life, but right. all the way up to federal, but where do you spend your money? There used to be a publication in North America, and I haven't been able to find anything like it, that rated major companies that you would recognize brand names and how they treat their employees, their environmental, their this, their that, all the way through. So you could, and they rated them. So you could yeah. say, well, this is a no-go for me, but 
they're trying on this. I will buy from this company over this company sort of thing. And I used to keep it on my fridge and I would know who I would be. That sounds like a claims magazine. Who would get my dollar over over somebody else. But it's harder to get that information now. It is. Well, just recently somebody put on, if you support people's workers, you know, because, you know, whatever company... They're doing this to their workers. It isn't fair and all that. So you better not eat any of these things. And I was going down the list and I went, oh, those are like some of my favorite crackers. <laughs> <laughs> so to step away from environmentalism a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Explain the Wiccan read. The Wiccan read goes, and at harm none, do what thou wilt, which means you can do what you like, but don't hurt anyone in the process. And that includes yourself. That's a biggie. A lot of people say, well, I'm only, no, I'm not hurting anybody else. That includes don't hurt yourself. So, you know, if you're doing magic or you're, you know, whatever, especially, you know, is what you doing going to hurt anyone? Is it manipulating someone? Is it, yes, you may, oh, I want this job. I want this new job. I want this new job. But that job you want, somebody may have to get fired for it. Right. So you always have to, I find, be very careful. You know, the job that is good for me that is you know good for all those around me you have to be very careful because you know you can be praying oh please I need a nice big windfall I need a nice big windfall and then your dad dies and you get some inheritance you gotta be careful I may have told this story before and especially I had when my daughter was in 5th or 6th grade one of her friends came to me and said is there such a thing as a love spell and I proceeded to speak about, well, you should never put it on someone. What do you, what do you want to know? Paul, there's this boy. And I said, no, you should never manipulate someone and this. And this gave the whole talk. She says, oh, so there is such a thing. Oh, I'll just go look it up online. <laughs> she didn't want to know if it was real. So the moral of that story is lie to your children. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the way I always used to um, explain that to, and it was always young women who would come into the store spell. looking for a love spell. And I would... We did have little spell kits, and there was one for love, but it was more about loving yourself enough to open yourself up to accept love, perhaps from an quadrant that you would not normally Mm -hmm. pay attention to. Absolutely. But, 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 I'm like, look, would you drug somebody to fall in love with you? Oh my God, no. I'm like, there you are. There's your answer. How would you like it if someone dropped ecstasy in your drink on the weekend? And Just for the, the other thing. one, I remember a couple of young women coming in, well, and they wanted to, can we share this? Can we share this? I said, as long as you are prepared to share the results. And then they put it down and walked away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and <laughs> not um, quite so adventurous. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and some people are even, are touchy with, you know, if you have someone who's, you know, trying to bind someone even. And I've never myself done a binding spell, but I have, however, done a mirror spell. So what this person does will come back to them. And if they do good, they're going to do get good. And I've done the mirror spell, but I've never done a specific binding spell. I will say that. So now I know quite a few people who know, I said, aren't you afraid because what you give out, you get back. Aren't you afraid that if you do that and you, 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 send this negative energy towards this person that it will come back to you and their answer is like no not afraid don't care and I'm like you're really not afraid of what would happen to you and and they're like no but to me and I gotta say because it hasn't happened to yet <laughs> well I grew up hearing you know I mean we weren't a heavy Christian house but those Christian values of do unto others as you would have do unto you what you reap what you sow God will get you Though then there's a saying, uh, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I shall repay. God will take care of that. So that was ingrained in me long before I was a pagan. Right. So I, I, that was really ingrained in me very long, very early. You have to really be careful. Like, oh, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to live in that house. Well, what will happen to the people who live there now? Right. You sort of have to try to think of, you know, what is the results of on other people? And that was, again, something that I always had to reiterate time and time and time again was you cannot interfere with anyone else's free will. You cannot affect anybody negatively. You know, again, the the hardcore Wiccans in the room, you see? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Not a little on the outside. (laughs) (laughs) Quiet. Now, again, I know know my scary witchy stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what? I did... At 
at one point set up a mini altar with a mirror to someone's karma <laughs> in a fit of anger. <laughs> well, that, that was the next question. Where does where do curses fit into all this? Oh, I've never cursed anyone. And a mirror, I don't think anyone. And a mirror spell is not a curse. Right. What they do... It's on that, you know, it, it's not the greatest necessarily, but I have, and you know what? That spell worked absolutely, probably the most effective spell I ever did in my life. It absolutely tore the hell out of whatever. Like, <laughs> you, you have, you execute the spell properly, the manifest aspects, but also you have an emotional hook and a real mental, mental yeah, spiritual, yeah. emotional energy that you put into it. So, of course, it worked. I have a different philosophy. Yeah. I have totally a different philosophy. And... I mean, you took it mainly in your magical life, right? You're you're talking mainly magical when you say these things. So it's interesting you say that because I guess maybe because of just who I am and the personality of my own, I've never had to apply it outside my magical life because I always live that way anyway. Live what way? Um, don't harm others. Don't do, you know what I mean? Like like that sort of idea. Do unto others. I was raised with it to start with. Okay, so I don't even think about that because it wouldn't occur to me. It does not. It almost it's almost like it's a non-issue in my other part of my life in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Like, so you would be tempted to hurt somebody magically that you wouldn't hurt. See, that's that's my rule. If if I if I would go to the courts and ask for a restraining order for somebody who is potentially dangerous or I've had a situation with that I'm thinking I have a family member who had an abusive spouse so we had to go through that process if I am going to in the real world I have no problem mirroring that if I in the magic with magic so is that a binding because a restraining order is a binding you can call it whatever you want but it's a binding so if I'm in if I can do that if if I can consider that in real world actions with lawyers or courts or whatever I have no problem doing that magically and usually it's in reverse if there was ever a time where I thought is there a way that I can use magic to support my aims I would say to myself would I do those things in the real world if I'm not going to come up and punch you and maybe there's a time that I might come up and punch you I haven't actually punched anybody for 45 years but you know it may happen that I have to do that but if I'm not prepared to assault you physically then I should not I don't feel that I should assault you magically I, I truly believe that that has the same effect Will I protect myself and does protecting, will I protect myself with, do I put an alarm system in to my house? Well, then I feel comfortable doing this, this amount of protection on my house. Would I do this? Would I do that? See, now in a love spell, would I use glamour magic to attract attention? Is that the same thing? You are, you are changing the dynamics of a relationship where... So, you know, there are, it, it is not as straightforward. No, it is no, not as straightforward. And, and is lipstick and eyeshadow and whatever else. Push up hair wrong, down, push up wrong, spank. No that's difference. that's glamour magic, yes, right? right? That's, that's, that's glamour, glamour magic. Glamour magic. And you all remember me. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah. those are the kind of things I, I think about. I, I, I really You're never, biting your tongue. So no, 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 not bad. I'm biting my tongue so I don't jump in. Oh, because I could jump in. No, uh, not in a bad way. I guess I almost never thought of it that way because any sort of magic that I would have to think about the ethics of, like, say, binding, mirroring, whatever, is usually something that would be deeply emotional that I really have to think about because I'm upset or I'm angry. And oftentimes, you can feel helpless. Mm -hmm. And when you're feeling absolutely helpless and there's nothing you can do, there's nothing you can do in the outer world. There's nothing you have to wait months and months to get into court. You know, I've been, I went to court five times in my divorce and it was just took like two and a half years. It was just awful. But you're feeling helpless, you're feeling this, you're feeling that. It's you so would not magic have helped that process? It wouldn't have been as personal, maybe. Maybe it's because it wouldn't be as personal. I think anytime I have to think of the ethics of magic, it's usually because I'm desperate or upset. 
Mm-hmm. Like if, if it's something for, oh, let's just have some love, you know, let's have some calm, happiness in my life. Let's just have some prosperity in my life. Let's help this person because they're ill. You know, that I don't even have to think of the ethics of. But if I want to bind someone or hex someone or, or mirror spell them, that means that I'm really, really emotionally involved. Anyway, you know what I mean? And you're yeah. feeling desperate. And but then that's when you say to yourself, well, what, what am I prepared to do in the real world? Yeah. Because it's like a job spell. It, it is. Doing a job spell is not getting a job unless you go out and do and something. Exactly. And that was the, another thing. You know, you, you still have to do the hard work. You still have to put out your resumes. You still have to go to the interviews. Yeah. It just may open up an opportunity. Yeah. Now, what was it? There's a line in... Mary Stewart's Merlin book, The Crystal Cave. And I remember reading it when I was 15 and it's never left me. The gods only go with you if you put yourself in their path. Mm -hmm. So you put yourself in their path, you get on in that little boat on the river and you go down the street (laughs) and you get going down that street. There's no use paddling against the, the, the current. But no, I never thought of it. And the thing is, is I think it's because sometimes in the in the mundane world or whatever things just drag on so long and you're so agonized and you feel like you're not taking action you need to do something maybe so that's when I really have to stop and think is this the right thing to do Mm -hmm. okay no this is not the right thing to do Mm -hmm. Um, and I did you know and I will tell anybody no you can't do this now as opposed to binding an individual I would put heavy protection on the person who could be in danger more than binding someone who was going to harm them. Like just for me that way and and uh, that's what I would do I would there's always kind of a way to like put heavy you know if anyone caught wishing me harm gets too close to me they're going to feel nauseous <laughs> you know, kind of idea. No, but that's just that's my on sister me. needed her restraining order yes she needed her restraining you order you need a restraining order yeah, no, that's I'm where not. you back that and, up and again yes that is, that, that, is, that, is, world, that is yeah but I as we're having this conversation there's this real dichotomy between the witches and druid I see because Brian's thinking ethics and he's thinking only manifest world I am going to behave with hospitality I am going to do this magic never I don't think you even thought the conversation would go that way no I I kind of assumed it would but it's just it doesn't because you're crazy yeah it doesn't doesn't, doesn't necessarily apply to to you yeah yeah. no but but to the to witches it does and the thing too and maybe this has just come to me sitting here talking about this it's the mundane world the courts the this the that i can say you know that let's put a little thing out there with magic that this is going to go quickly and going to go whatever but i can't control that you know it's kind of like the risk you know the things in the mundane world how fast will this happen you know will this court case go this way or if you and her sister need a restraining order or this that is not something like the law with the law of our province of our country that's nothing i can control you know but your I mean? magic could maybe could. speed up the process that's right it, the could, it could it can speed it up could, the process it could make uh, the judiciary, how at uh, whatever level it is, look on my case favorably, mm-hmm. but by the same, it can. But I guess it's because that, like the outside world sort of deal, it, part of it is is not in my control, and I am Miss Virgo Moon. <laughs> That's a thing with control. You know, what I mean, a lot in Virgo. I like to have this in order, and this, and this, and this. And when things, when I ha- feel I have no control then I am tempted to do things that might not be ethical. So then I really have to stop myself. I'm very, very, very conscious of ethics. I'm very stern about it because I could let it get out of hand. If I was not ethical, there'd be so much bad shit going on. (laughs) If I did not have that ethics system, that so many people be hexed. (laughs) <laughs> so much trouble be happening. So this one would be is, dead. Is it ethics <laughs> or is it that you know actions have consequences? Yes. But yeah, I always think about the consequences. But I that's do. not that's not ethics. That's <laughs> fear. You're coming from your Christian roots. That's, right? that is, that's, that's definitely <laughs> coming from. Well, no, and I also do have you know like I, I also do have you no know, you know kind of I do hear that old do unto others, which is kindness, human kindness. But some there are occasions in your life when you are going to feel that that person doesn't deserve any human kindness that's gonna happen that whether you like it or not 
And I never, I never lived that sort of life in my life. I lived a very blessed life and this and that. But, you know, when the occasion one day does, and it often comes up for many people, when you feel that person, if I didn't think I would go to jail, I would go cut their head off right now. you got to think of the ethics. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, no, no, we're, we're on the bench here, you know? <laughs> Like sometimes when oh. you're just when you're so beside yourself about some and it it happened you know every eight nine years ago that time and if it wouldn't have been for my ethics you know God God has forbid something should happen to him but I have more than one person say to me why is he still alive I'm like pardon me well you could take care of that and I'm like oh, I'm not doing that <laughs> the music of this episode you just said you didn't perform a lot of robbery and murder and I'm trying to, <laughs> to, to wonder now you know what I have. <laughs> Mom, I guess my ethics are much more questionable. That's why I really restrict my ethics really to a lot of magic, I think. is because I have no ethics against robbing a bank. I have a problem no, with jail. That's a conversation <laughs> I, I've had in the past with others. Is To me, if you're stealing bread to feed your family, that to me is perfectly okay. I am a strong believer in if you see a mom stealing milk at the grocery store, you didn't. That sort of idea. And it, it's not necessarily a stance against the big corporations or anything like that. It's just people need to do what they yeah. need to do to well, survive. Well, what country is it? There's there's more than one country. Oh, where is it? Where if you're caught stealing food of any kind, they will not charge you because if you were driven to steal, you obviously need it. Yeah. That kind of idea. No, I, I guess I, I contradicted myself a little bit. I guess we're thinking about things because well, I really do. I'm very glad I have that. <laughs> when you're wanting that, that crazy thing to happen, sometimes I think, or you're really, really, you know, I have loved this person since fourth grade and they just won't see me. I'm putting a spell on them. I have one of those books at home. <laughs> I have and, a book and, at know, home. I know, you, I know you think you're hiding all those books, but every one of those books is online now. People talk, people have access to every one of those. Really? Some Google of them are apps. very old and out of yeah. print. Yeah. yeah they're they're especially the ones that are available yeah. online. Isn't you that know, something? Because yeah. before there was this like two or three books that if anybody ever saw them, like on a second hand table yeah. or something, we used to buy them so they wouldn't get in the wrong hands. Yeah. I guess they, that's over. You, you Google that. You'll find a book. <laughs> oh, no, I guess it is different. But, you know, someone say, I've had more than one person say, could you kill someone? And I just like, well, I don't know, but I never would. <laughs> I've, I've got a book on how to do it. I've got a book with a spell on how to do it. I'm not doing that. Because, you know, I could end up sick and dying myself. That That is it. But when it comes, push comes down sometime to shove and you're at that state where you don't even give a shit what happens to yourself so long as that person gets it, having that strong ethic is, is important to me. But that's just me. And I'm really a very easygoing person. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just this one thing. It's just one thing. I did, however, threaten. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I did say, I did, I did Miss say, Miss Congeniality over here. Again. No, I did once threaten a boyfriend of my daughter's. You know, there's no hole you can fall into deep enough that I can't find you <laughs> if you're not nice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's just joking around with teenagers. You know. Stuart gave that talk to Drake, actually, when we started seeing each other. I <laughs> thought he was being, you know, protective. Well, yeah, taking the care. side, giving a little speak. Yeah, so. Maybe sometime when we've had more to drink, we'll tell the story of uh, No Hole Deep Enough. Were you there that night at, night at Coyotes? <laughs> <laughs> no, so... I mean, we've had a very interesting gone interesting with ethics <laughs> there we go and really if something happens to my ex-husband it wasn't me <laughs> I was like, it's all I'm not sure you've sold anybody on <laughs> I, don't, I don't know <laughs> it wasn't me no true, truly it's uh, I, I guess I, I'm really glad I have very very firm ethics because if I didn't it could be bad some things could be bad. So what you're saying is better for everybody else. That's yes. the thing. Right. It okay. is the thing because sometimes it's like, 
Or you just sick to death and fed up. Like, come on. Who hasn't been sick to death and fed up? Well, I think everybody is pretty sick to death and fed up. It's 2022, right? I'm backed. I'm I'm in that. I don't care if I get sick. I'm not having another COVID test. Unless I need a doctor. But it's not even even COVID at this point. It's, It's the housing crisis. It's the cost of groceries skyrocketing. It's shocking. The lack of cost of living. Uh, it's it's nuts. It's like minimum wage has got has gone up two dollars in ten years and houses rent has doubled. Doubled, yeah. Yeah. It's like none of us get ready, Brian. You're gonna be like me, you're never gonna get rid of your kid. <laughs> at this point, like the, the idea of buying a house at this point is foreign. Like mm. I think one of my new favorite sayings is like monogamy in this economy. He ain't, gonna, he ain't buying a house in this. Yeah. Yeah. You need to start pulling other people in. That's not the only way this is gonna work. Well, you know what? Does anybody have enough land for us to have that kind of we, commune I've been talking about for years? That's a conversation I think all of us have constantly. Not necessarily living all in the same house, but if you no, had one property and everyone had little houses of their own, build and, little tiny homes, and, and and you know help each other, and I think that too. So for for thousands and thousands, millions of years, families did live um, multi generation, you know, multi generation. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's kind of after that. Well, it, oh. North America is one of the only places that. Doesn't do that. Yeah. And yeah, I, I suspect you'll start seeing that. Yeah. And uh, I actually saw a um, TV commercial, and I usually don't see TV, but I did. And it was for laundry detergent. And they said, Our daughter has moved back home with her children. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not my grandparents or my grandchildren are visiting. It's like, This is detergent is better for many loads. And there was this woman in her 30s who moved back in her home with her parents whether it be from divorce or she just couldn't manage you know because of everything so expensive I was very surprised to see that it was very very I was like wow look at that mm-hmm. so multi-generational living I think has a lot of perks oh it does a, a lot of it especially you know you want to go out you know grandma takes you know if you're going back out to work it would be nice to have grandma if you like your parents and you know yeah. you nice to have grandma taking care of your children instead of a stranger yeah kind of idea but that's a topic for another time yeah. now you're all you guys everyone you all can't see it everyone in this room is looking at me like <laughs> <laughs> I think it came off too strong no, I came off too strong I, I'm a very I'm, I'm trying to impress upon people don't be doing that bad shit you will regret it yeah <laughs> at some point I, I do I would do an episode and maybe I'll just drag one of the druids along and we'll just do an episode on the nine I I know um, working in the prisons I do a whole I do a little thing about virtues so I put the acid truth ones up yeah. I put the ADF ones I have some of the wisdom texts from the you know the Cormac the Irish don't be too modest don't be too this don't be yeah. I, and I, I talk about the Wiccan read and and the threefold law and I and I know like they don't actually go to Gardner and there's, you know, different things and all this academically, but they're taken on as because they have their good catchphrases that people can hang on to. Like nobody looks around and sees there. There may be hardcore fundamentalist Wiccans. I would say that maybe believe in the threefold law. But when you look around in real life, you don't see anybody slam three times every time with good or bad or whatever. Yeah. And it was taken out of context from one of his books yeah. and applied incorrectly. But the fact that, you know, actions have consequences and stuff. We have this thing where we talk about and and it's easier with the acid true and the and the ADF virtues because they're laid out there. And I'm like how do you value them? How do you rate them? What would be number one for you? What would be number two? And everybody has their own, what right. do they value? And we put this up. What's, what's, what don't you see that you think you should should be up here? Those sorts of things. Because I think it's really important to have, a, have an intentional, not a wholesale accepting. Because if you have an intentional and you think about what are these virtues, what are important to me, you are less susceptible to turning on the TV and having your what I should value being fed to you by mm-hmm. advertising or 
programming or you know you youtube videos or you know all of those sorts of things if you're intentional and you think about these things so mm-hmm. i do i do that and i use the virtues and i think they're a really good jumping off point but it's interesting to see the kind of things that like loyalty came up and there's no real whatever but then you take that back and what does that mean to you and all those sorts of things but you are it is interesting to see what people value and the idea that if there's anybody that's learned the hard way that there's actions have consequences it's those people sitting in prison right. Yeah, yeah. True. that's right but that's I think it. that also demonstrates as well why paganism and it's creative form of spirituality mm-hmm. appeals to people is you are not being spoon fed mm-hmm. this is what you are to believe this is what should be important to you this is how you need to behave in order to get into heaven yes yes it's what what if which of these concepts speak to you and do you feel you can embrace and work with to become a better person? A better person. Yes. And, and in the Druid, um, I don't know if the ADF use it, but I know a lot of times in Druidry, Brendan Myers, too, uses the worthwhile life, right? Yeah. How do I build that worthwhile life? How, does, yeah. how do I give my life value and act in a way that is that adds value to me and the community? Yeah. Right. That sort of thing. So a really good example, actually, of, of how the Druid virtues have come into effect on an ethical level recently is that in... One of our virtues is hospitality, is being uh, hospitable to the gods and goddesses, but also your fellow man. And something that's come up with COVID is a lot of people have gone out looking for vaccine exemptions. And ADF won't give them because it goes against our ethics. Giving you a vaccine exemption puts others at risk and therefore not very... Hospitable. Hospitable, yes. <laughs> if, if you're just getting everyone sick. So, mm. that, no, that, that will never happen from ADF. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. Yeah, that's nifty. That's very interesting. So, unlike Maeve, who's more about murdering others. <laughs> I, I, was, I was trying to stress a point. I'm really not that vindictive. <laughs> I really, really am not. But when you were speaking of you know, which one of these speaks to you so that you can live this sort of life and not be told, you know, off TV or off YouTube or off this on what you should do and how you should feel. Because, you know, if you have, you know, the, the read for me, you know, very mm-hmm. Wiccan based, if you have that read when you are tempted, when you are beside yourself or when you're feeling desperate, if that is part of your core of how you feel, mm-hmm. you're not going to go through with it. Right. It's like these gentlemen sitting in prison that you see. If they would have had some of these thoughts or some of these things in their past, they may not have ended up in jail. Mm-hmm. Right? So it makes me sound vindictive. Usually my my spells are more about butterflies or something, you know, something nice or transforming or helping yourself or this and that. I suppose I'm playing devil's advocate here all night. But um, it really does help when you or people who are, you know, have tempers and are this, you know, if they have that, you know, that, that ethic or that what are these virtues I want to fall back on? Am I following these virtues? Am I following those ethics? prevent you maybe from doing something you regret and if i'm going to regret something i want it to be a giant bottle of big tea tequila and a bunch of cabana boys i don't want to <laughs> that. <laughs> that i'm going to jail because i killed somebody or you know at some you know made someone's house burnt out or something and i mean i'm being mostly sarcastic there and margo's saying i can tell you from experience no regrets <laughs> yeah. tequila and cabana boys are no regrets <laughs> Well, I have no regrets. That's a whole other episode. (laughs) I'm a single lady, there's no regrets. You know, unless you come away with it, you know, with an STD or something. (laughs) What's it worth it? (laughs) That's on you. That's on you. I'm just playing the, the, pardon me, the devil's advocate on the other side of the fence here. People are going to listen to this episode and like, what is going on? (laughs) (laughs) It's because you fed me a drink. (laughs) No, no, that's... Well, look, thank you very much for tuning in. And I wonder wonder how much of this will be edited out. It's a wild ride. None of it is going to be edited out. (laughs) So thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, if you'd like to ask us any questions or have have any comments at all or suggestions for 
future shows, you can certainly contact us on our Facebook page, Three Witches and a Druid. And if you want to give us thumbs up. And stars. And, and stars and all of that wonderful stuff. Thank you very much. That would be wonderful. Three Witches and a Druid podcast. I'd like to take a moment to thank our amazing Patreon supporters. Today, we shout out to Danny, Tania, Sarah, Lore, Kay, Linda, and Jennifer. Without your generous support and contributions, we couldn't bring you this magical content, and we thank you for listening. Until next time, everybody, Merry Meet, Merry Merry Heart, heart. and Merry Meet again. Bless Bless you. This has been Three Witches and a Druid Podcast. Thanks for